Hi. Hi. Oh my god. It's been so long. It's been so long. Hi. How are you? Oh my god. It's been such a long time. Well, it's been like three weeks. Not that long. But it has been. It has been a while. And dude, so much has happened. I'm gonna talk a little bit about it. But today's video is, well, I am currently gonna be recording two videos today. But the video you're currently watching is an oh, it's an overhaul. Yay, we got a haul, an art haul from Japan. Because I was in Japan, right? Um, in the last couple of videos, I mentioned that I was selected for an exchange program. It was just two weeks in Japan and it was incredible. It was amazing. I'm probably gonna talk at length about it in the other video and in the Twitch streams I do. <laughs> but yeah, a lot happened. It was incredible. I had the opportunity to go to Hiroshima, um, Kyoto and Tokyo and we were in Osaka because that's where the institute was and when we stayed most of the time I got to meet so many amazing and kind of nice people. <laughs> My allergies are kind of, you know, uh, giving me the, uh, the pain, but it's fine. <laughs> so you hear my voice <laughs> kind of strange just because of that. But yeah, it was an amazing two weeks. I had so much fun and well, in those two weeks, I had the opportunity to because <laughs> obviously I prepared <laughs> beforehand and I looked up lots of art stores and found art stores nearby the institute and I actually had the opportunity to visit one of them and I bought a ton of stuff if you're ever in Osaka I really recommend it it's located around the Shinsaibaishi area it's well the Huyasaji actually and it's called U Arts it's an incredible art store it might be small but it has everything you could imagine it's incredible and of course I couldn't hold back and I bought some stuff <laughs> I bought some stuff for me and I bought some stuff for family as, as souvenirs but yeah. so today I'm gonna be showing you basically what I got and in the next video I'm gonna be doing something with this art supplies that I got so <laughs> this is her first art supply yes it's incredible now this is this is Kuretake Gansai Tami, which is a type of Japanese traditional paint. It's similar to watercolor, however, it works a little bit different. But yeah, it's pretty similar to watercolor. And yeah, I bought my own set. <laughs> I bought a set of Kuretake Gansai Tami. I am really happy with it. I still haven't even opened it, actually. Um, actually, let's open it. So yeah, this is our set. I chose a set that is really like very soft colors. In general, when you look up, when you're looking for Japanese traditional paints, um, you're gonna see very mellow colors. They're very soft. Uh, in Japanese traditional painting, you don't get a lot of like. Ugh very striking contrasting tones they're very like mellow and soft and gentle on the eyes they're not very uh, you know they don't scream at you like the mcdonald's red, red and yellow like they're very chill colors so yay i'm gonna be opening it i've been waiting i've been back in costa rica for uh four days i think i don't know time is very confusing when you're jet lagged by like 15 hours but yeah, I'd be waiting to open it so I could record it. And oh my god, here's the paper with the instructions and everything. Gansai Tambi, da na na na, and you know, the cares and stuff like that. Oh my god, they look so pretty. I <laughs> And I like that the head has like the, the color name. So we, we've got like Sanguido, Aiko, and Penihi. And I think one of these should be Gunjo. Maybe? Oh no, wait, there's no Gunjo on this. Oh, oh, that's a little bit sad. Well, we do have... We have... Mishikiriro. And we have Himawariro, which is basically yellow. 
and you know, Amairo and Usuasaki and a whole bunch of really pretty colors. And it comes like this. Oh, ho, 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 with a box. So it comes in a box. So, oh shit, I flipped it. That was stupid of me. But yeah, it comes like this. And you just open it. And they come in little uh, pills. I call them pills, but I always forget what other people call them. You know, they come in like this, uh, this containers. Similar to watercolors. Except that they're bigger, like way bigger <laughs> than your usual watercolors. And they come like this and you can just stick them in and out, right? I love them! Oh my god, this is so cool! And they come in a box and- oh! Actually, the inside of the box has the names too. I'm gonna turn on the light. Why did I turn on the light? Oh, well, there's maybe a little- Uh, wait a second. Oye, Siri, enciende las luces? Okay, I think that's good. Whoops. But yeah, this is what we got. Oh, here we have like the dictionary for the colors. Dovido and Amero and Dovami. A whole bunch of beautiful colors that I'm really excited to use. Like, look at them. Look at the palette. It looks so pretty. It looks so pretty. I'm so happy that I was able to buy it. That I was actually able to find it. And look at it. Look at it. it closes. And it looks so pretty. Like, it's the most beautiful paint box I've seen in my life. I love Kuretake Art Supplies. They're really good quality. It's my first time actually having something from them, aside from like a small Huda pen. So I'm pretty excited to try these. <laughs> they look so pretty! Oh my god, they're so pretty. I don't know if I should keep this. I'm gonna put it to the side and I'm gonna show you the other stuff that we have. <laughs> Um, the other stuff that I bought at UArts is, well, I bought, I bought a whole bunch of other stuff, but this is something else that I bought there. This is just a portable art palette, like a paint palette. Oh, give me this. I like the shape, it has like a good overall shape, the material is pretty good too, pretty hard, like it's not gonna break. In general, I love that Japanese supplies, objects, tools in general, they're really good quality, even if they're cheap. So they're not gonna, you know, easily break or tear. And it looks awesome, actually. I love this one. It's a reasonable size. I like the design allows you to put like a whole, a whole drop of paint in there and just kind of spread it out here and here. I find it very convenient. I like it. And so I bought it. We're gonna use it on the next video we draw something and you can say that the brand here says Namuda, right? And now, funnily enough, I also grabbed a brush case that is from the same brand and I didn't notice until I was back home and I saw the brand and I was like, oh! So yeah, I also got this, which is a pretty cool brush case. I actually am... I'm actually a little bit bummed that I got the size wrong. I should have picked the longer one. I picked the short brush case. I should have picked the longer one because it turns out that most of my brushes are a little bit longer. So eh, I kind of screwed up on that one. It, of course it didn't come with the brushes. I just kind of <laughs> already stuck some of my own. I did buy this one in UARC, so in the same store. So we have this one. It's a Tataki brush. Tataki Hude. The big one. And it's, it's a Kyoto brand. And yeah, it's just like bamboo, I think. Is it bamboo or like fake bamboo? I'm not sure. But yeah, I found that it's a really like, curious shape. It's very misurasi. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm probably gonna be saying a lot of random Japanese words. It's been two weeks since I've spoken Spanish or English regularly. Like, I spent those two weeks mostly speaking Japanese, so I'm still getting used to the English and Spanish again. But yeah, I found this brush that has a very unusual shape for me. I've never seen a brush like this, and I don't know, I, I just want to test it out and see what it does. So yeah, I got this brush there. It's really good quality too. They're all natural brushes. I also bought these there. <laughs> I also bought these brushes because honestly, you can never have enough small brushes, like, I just keep buying more and more of them. They're just really good and really convenient. 
for details and such. So I got those two, like this brush set and this brush and the brush case, which so far so good. I can just wrap it up like this and I'll need it for class because up until now I was just carrying my brushes like in a trash bag. So no good for brushes, you know, they're gonna... Uh, uh, I forgot words in English. Uh, it'll, it'll come back to me. But the brushes will actually start to like get really eh, damaged, sort of, if you just carry them around without caring. So I just bought the brush case because I want to take care of my brushes. I also bought uh, two other Gunsight colors that come separately in the little containers. So you've got um, Gofun, which is like the white, and this is, I think it's uh, Kocha, which is black like like a brown black brownish black i got those two because the palette got from kuretake if we look at it again it doesn't have white or black so i just bought these two separately and the last thing that i bought there that is like art supply well no not the last thing but yeah this is the other thing i bought now most of you probably don't know what this is so I'm gonna like explain a little bit about it since we're gonna be using it in the next video. First, this. I bought a smaller one because really, I, why would I need the big one? So here it is. This is an ink stone. It's an ink stone. Now, this type of stone, it's used to grind ink sticks and make ink, sumi ink to be more specific. I'm really excited about using it. It's brand new, it's like very hard because it's an ink stone, you know. The idea with this is that you drop a little bit of water and then you grind the ink stick and you make the ink and then you can use it. And it's like, like seriously hard, like it's an ink stone. And I bought two ink sticks that I could try, like the colors that I would prefer, I think. So I bought like the more um, uh, the more purple tone and then a brown tone. So let's open both of them. Oh. oh, the boxes are so perfect. Like there's no visible seam. Jesus, I love Japanese design. It's so perfect. It's incredible. And it, they come like this, wrapped up in this paper, and here we go. This is ink. Actually, I'm not gonna touch it much because it is gonna stay in my hands. But yeah, this is the ink stick. You're supposed to grind it here with some water, and you're gonna get ink. And it's just common use in traditional Japanese art, like Nihonga, and stuff like that. It gives very beautiful results. It is also used in Japanese calligraphy. So, yeah. I want to really try to test that and make a painting with the Gansai Tambi and the ink sticks. This is the other one. And it's pretty much gonna be the same. And it comes like this, wrapped up. We're gonna wrap it back up again and just put it back in the put it back in the box so ink sticks and ink stone which I'm oh sorry which I'm pretty excited about so you can I'm gonna wrap it back up I bought these. And the last thing I bought, like an art supply. Like something that I was gonna use to make art, not carry stuff, is this. It's a small watercolor sketchbook. I actually, before the trip, I had been looking for a small one because I wanted a small sketchbook watercolor paper, watercolor paper sketchbook that I could carry around and just like do little urban watercolor sketches with. But I couldn't find one small enough. But as it happened, <laughs> when I was in the store, I actually saw this, which is a very small watercolor sketchbook. It's pretty much the size of my hand. 
which is great because I, I mean I can carry it in my pocket so that's awesome I can just carry it around when I'm in the street and stuff and want to sketch or something and while it's small it's got really good paper it's uh, I think 350 grams so it's perfect for heavy water cards it's really nice paper I'm really excited about trying this one I'm probably not gonna use it in any videos so because I do want to do like urban sketches with this size yeah that's the last thing I got from the store however it's not the end of the art haul because I did get <laughs> other stuff now there's something else that I got that it's like an art supply I think oh no wait no no I forgot I forgot that was those <laughs> I also got a very cool pen hey 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 I got a G pen from the UART store. I got a G pen and it comes like this. Like you get the nib separately and the handle. And I got this ink. It's like comic ink. I am really excited about it. I really want to use it soon and like really learn how to use G pens. I also could have gotten, they had a whole different array of different types of like nibs. I got the Jeep in though because it's like the most basic and I think the one you usually see in like comics and manga. So yeah, I bought the Jeep and nib and the handle. So I can just like stick it in here and dip it, which is really freaking cool in my opinion. I'm really excited about getting to use this and I don't know, become more skilled with pens of this type because I think they're really hard to use, so they wanna become good at it. I'm really excited about using this. I also bought this at UArts. I was really excited to find they had a small section for this kind of pens and nibs. And you could choose any kind of combination you wanted. And the handles, they had different types too. It's so cool. Like seriously, if you're ever in Osaka, I would really recommend that you check out um, UArts. They have really good prices, amazing supplies, and yeah, just overall recommend it if you're ever there. I was just lucky to have been chosen for the exchange program. I don't know if I might go back anytime soon. But yeah. And the last thing I got as a supply was not from the store, which I really recommend. And yeah, but let's stop talking about the store. The last things I got that were supplies I got from my host family. So yeah, well, I was on the trip. I had a host family for one day, sort of. They were... A couple like an old man and an old woman they were incredibly kind one of the kindest people I have met in my entire life I actually sort of feel really sad like crying when I talk about them but they were extremely nice they were really so kind and as it happened my cousin my um, host family mother as it happens she likes to draw and paint and she had a lot of art supplies and when i told her that i was an art student and i was actually looking for dan saitambi to buy while i was in japan she was actually like oh i have a whole bunch of them just like take whatever you want take whatever you need i'm not using them i'm not needing them just like you use them i would rather you know you make some use of them and i was like ah, ah. she like they were the sweetest people ever and so she happened to give me this. Now these are also kind of Gansai Tambi, however these are called Teppati. And because they're bigger, they come in like this bigger plate. They come like this in the bigger plates that you would usually see in like Iwaenobu in Honga. If you want to look up what Iwaenobu are, just you know, look it up on YouTube. There are many videos explaining what kind of tools and supplies are used in traditional Nihonga, which is traditional Japanese medium. But yeah, she gifted me the pachi that she had that are like new. They're new. They haven't been used. <laughs> she was so kind. Really, I, my host family was extremely kind to me and to my classmates who shared host family with me. They were really kind. They were amazing people. And I am so glad to have met them. <laughs> Uh, she was really, she was, they were really good people and they really motivated me and encouraged me to pursue my art and stuff. 
it would be really nice. So yeah, they, she gifted me these two colors of uh, Tepatik and this, which is Gansai Tami. So the same as the Kuretaku ones that I bought. However, this one, she was like, well, she had a lot of boxes like this, but because she has been using them for a while, some of them were already empty or something. But so she was like, she opened all like her 20 boxes for me and she was like, take whichever ones you like, whichever ones you find useful in a good condition, just take, take them, take them. So yeah, so she gave me all of these, which I'm really happy about too. These are great. There, there are a lot of like autumn colors. I kind of like them because they're, they look like an autumn color, like like it was intentional. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really excited about these too. I want to use them so badly. So yeah. <laughs> In summary, my host family was incredible. I'm probably gonna talk about them at length in other videos but yeah this is basically all of the supplies that i got while i was in japan including the pen which is also great and incredible and amazing and i'm really excited about using all of these in the next video exploring what i can do with them i'm really excited about them i got such good art supplies at that store. It, it's an incredible art store, really. If you ever go to Osaka and are in the area, I really recommend it. They have everything from markers to ink, fountain pens, watercolors, oil, acrylic, everything. They've got everything. They've got canvas, paper, anything you might need, they sell it there. It's incredible. But yeah, and people were so nice. They were so nice. <laughs> People were so nice in Japan. Well, yeah. And the last thing I got, like art themed, in Japan was a ton of books. <laughs> well, I got a lot of books overall, but I got three art books in Japan. And this is one of them. You might recognize it, <laughs> you might not. But, uh, you see, this is a book titled Color and Light. It's a very, very famous artist. It was written quite a while ago. However, it's <laughs> famously and widely regarded as one of the most important and well-written books when it comes to trying to study and comprehend how shadows and lightning affect colors and stuff like that. It's an incredible book for when you're trying to, you know, really upgrade your art level and try to understand color and light. Shadows and Lightning. It's incredible. This book is recommended by everyone. If you watch other art YouTubers, you probably have heard of it before. Everyone recommends it at some point. It's an amazing book. And I had actually been looking for it for years, but I could not find it anywhere. I just found the file randomly somewhere on the internet, but it was not the same thing. Like I wanted the real thing. And while I was in Japan and we were staying, I think it was during the Kyoto trip, and I went out with other two other friends during one of the nights that we were in Kyoto. And I was like, oh, there's a bookstore nearby. Let's go check it out. So we went to the bookstore and I find that there is a huge art book section right at the entrance. I mean, in Costa Rica, there are no art book sections <laughs> in the libraries. And if there are, it's like 10 books. Like, there, no. It's no more than that. These are actual art books, like for real art books that aim to teach you stuff about art. And there were so many, like there were so many, there were so many shelves of just art books. I was in heaven, man. I could not choose, but I ended up buying three. And this is one of them because while I was trying to find books to buy and <laughs> choose, because there were so many, it was, I really had a hard time choosing. And while I was looking around the shelves and looking at the titles, I found this. And I read the title, like the spine of the book, and I was like, wait, no way, no way. And then I grabbed the book and yes, it was the book. It was Color and Light book. And yes, I managed to get it. And it was, well, we have we have the price here. It was like uh, 40, like 30, 39, 38 dollars. It's really not a lot. 
it's a good price because in my country it would have been a lot more expensive. <laughs> and yeah, this, I got it. I got it. This is such a victory for me. I'm really happy that I was able to find this. But yeah, I got this. It's incredible. The artist who made this book gave really good examples. He aims to explain exactly how light works, affects colors, you know. How shadows might project depending on light source. Everything. It's it's an incredible book when you're trying to learn, and I am really excited about starting to read it, like on paper and not a random digital file. I am really excited that I was able to get this one. It's an amazing art book. It's recommended by everyone. It really helps when you're trying to comprehend lightning, colors, that kind of stuff. It's it's incredible. So I'm really excited about it. And I got two others. This one I saw and I was like, hmm, what's this? And then I read the bottom and I was like, it's it's from Gedai? Most of you probably don't know, but if you have watched Blue Period or if you have read Blue Period, then you know that Tokyo Gedai is, it's, well, it's a nickname for the Tokyo University of the Arts. And it's the only public university, the only public art university in Japan. It's known for being extremely hard to get in <laughs> and an incredibly, incredibly amazing and good art university. They have a bunch of different courses, but they're particularly well known, I think, for the Japanese traditional art course and the oil painting course. And yeah, it's just an overall amazing university. And <laughs> when I saw that it was made by the university, I was like, <gasps> I have to get this and it's a book but it's basically like sort of an essay about appreciation for Japanese art so I found it incredibly interesting it's probably gonna take me a while to get through it because it is university level so there are like no kurigana and <laughs> I will need a dictionary but hopefully I will learn a lot of new vocabulary while I'm reading this it will be incredible I just know it I'm so excited about starting to read this one. This is an essay, and it's by Kelly, and I'm, I'm just I'm just excited to read this. But yeah, this is the other one I got, and the last art book that I got was this one, which is basically an, a book which talks about like how to look at Japanese traditional paintings from the colors, specifically at the colors, analyzing them and like reading the paintings from the colors, starting from the colors. So yeah, I also found it incredibly interesting, especially because um, I'll be participating in the National Japanese Speech Contest in a month. And the theme I chose for my speech was Nihonga, which is Japanese traditional painting. So that's why I chose two books that talk about Nihonga. So yeah, I am really excited about this one too. It actually looks pretty good. It talks a lot about colors and paintings, uh, the meanings of them, the expression in Japanese paintings, how they use colors and brush strokes for expression. Yeah, I'm just really excited about it. I really want to read it. I haven't started really. I think I just tried to read like the first part and I haven't gone any further than that yet but I am really excited about this too so yeah I bought these three art books in that incredible bookstore right now I don't remember the name of it but I know there are many many bookstores in Kyoto from the same like, from the same chain from the same chain is that is that Spanglish I don't know I can't remember <laughs> right now but yeah I went to one of those incredible bookstore. They also have like a section for stationery and a lot, a lot of books, so many art books and all actually art books that are aiming to teach you stuff. It's incredible. I've never seen books that aim to teach you art stuff before. Like in Costa Rica, you only see like books that talk a little bit about specific artists and their paintings and that's it and you might be able to find a 
like one or two books about anatomy and that's it like that's it you won't be able to find like actually good quality art books regarding art that actually aim to teach you specific stuff about art there were so many books I, I went a little bit crazy. I spent like two hours in there trying to choose and look at all of them. But yeah, it was incredible and I'm really excited about getting to read these. But it's gonna take me some time. I mean, I probably can start reading the, the one about lightning and stuff. However, this piece, like, mm -hmm, that's gonna take some time. Because they're university level, so the language is a lot more complicated. This one's also gonna be a little bit complicated, but not as much. But yeah, I'm basically gonna be reading a lot of Japanese and hopefully upgrading my level. <laughs> I'm gonna be leveling up because I'm gonna be getting a lot of practice. So yeah, this is basically all I got in Japan that was art themed. Well, I also got an art backpack, which is really just like a huge backpack, which, you know, it's big. It's big and it has space for like, um, canvas rolls and stuff like that but yeah this is basically all i got the new supplies and i'm excited to try out all of them in the next video i'm gonna be doing a painting with the gansai tambi and the ink so i'm looking forward to it i have no idea what to do yet but uh i'll figure it out this is all i got in japan i really recommend going to the bookstore and i really recommend going to the art supply they're tax-free, so if you're a foreigner and you're not living in Japan, you can get tax-free above, I think, 5,000 yen. So yeah, if you buy anything above 5,000 yen, you can get tax-free prices. So I overall, I just really recommend it. It's a beautiful art store and they have amazing supplies there. Like I wanted to buy everything. <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah, but I got this and I also got, you know, the teppachi and the skansai tambi from my host mother. She was the most lovely person I've met. They were so nice, both of them. The Bolsan, like, I mean, my host family father, my host father was also incredibly nice and supportive of my studies, of my art and stuff. They were really kind people. I was really lucky to have met them. And yeah, this is all I got in Japan. I am really excited about trying it. I want to start painting so badly. This is it. It's been a while, hasn't it? But yeah, I want to tell you all about what happened during the trip. It was an amazing experience. I'm extremely grateful and glad that I got to go, that I was chosen. And it was incredible. I have no regrets, even though I bought a lot of stuff. Like, this is only the art stuff. I bought 24 books. Like. My luggage was full, <laughs> but it was amazing. I have zero regrets. So yeah, I'll be seeing you later in the next video when we actually get to use the art supplies. <laughs> I wonder what we'll make. I don't know. But for now, bye. I'll see you later. Subscribe and like if you, I don't know, want to see more and stuff. Yeah, bye. Have a good day, night or evening or wherever it is, wherever you are. And bye.